want to help you find friends that not only make you happy, but help drive you toward holiness. Professionally, we want to help give you access to professional development, Broadway artists, discussions, classes, whatever we can use that will help give you access to tools that will help you book will further you in your practice and your pursuit of art. Um, and then, of course, all the most important thing, spiritually, we want to give you as many opportunities to grow in your walk with Christ as we possibly can. We want you to wake up today loving Jesus more than you did yesterday, and any part that we can have in that, we will take, and we will receive that blessing of walking beside you in your faith. So um, I'm going to get out of the way because the coolest guy in the planet <laughs> is speaking tonight. We're going to continue in our Greater Than series. Um, we've been in Greater Than for what, five? Five gatherings, I think? I think something like that. Who can tell me some of the Greater Thans that we've talked about so far? Awkward. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> He's getting your notes out. Anxiety. Fear and anxiety was not the one that was LB. Mm -hmm. Effort. Yeah. Greater than your effort. Or so. Um, <laughs> Anybody got greatest need? Greater than your greatest need was Pastor Powell slash dad. Yes, sir. Okay, great. And tonight you're going to hear from Jay. You guys give him a warm welcome. Woo! Start a funny story about these chairs right here. When I was in high school, um, I was playing in a band in church, and I was I was stuck in the service lane, and I did this this random Sunday and sat straight through the chair. No, they're in the middle of the discussion, and these you know it's <laughs> as loud as you possibly can. So that's I was gently gingerly <laughs> rest my my seat on the chairs now. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. <laughs> so, uh, hey, everyone. It's really good to see you tonight. Thanks for being here. Uh, I'm excited to, uh, to dive into the Word with you tonight. And uh, it's been an incredible series for me personally. I've, uh, I've seen the Lord um, convict me uh, of, of not truly uh, giving everything over to Him uh, and, and, and trusting that He is greater than my fears, than my greatest needs. Uh, than my anxieties, than my, my passions, my desires, my whatever, name it, whatever it is, and uh, coming face to face with the reality that uh, if, if I truly believe that, how do you believe that? What does it look like uh, as a Christ follower? So, um, really, really excited to see you tonight. And um, what uh, I was walking through the last couple of weeks, you know, LB actually stole my. I did my not name. steal it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. The Lord spoke to me about you, the same thing, so. <laughs> she stole my idea like a month ago. Like, fear and anxiety, like that's what, that's probably the biggest thing, and then she did it. <laughs> so then, you know, nothing like rewriting a message. But <laughs> uh, as I was diving in, uh, the thing that stood out to me um, even more, I'm glad, I'm glad she did, I really am, because um, the thing that I'm walking through now is uh, greater than my understanding. And uh, that may be a really vague, a vague word to use, but uh, hopefully we can we can really lock that down and what that means uh, individually for us, whether that be individual understanding, whether that be understanding on the grand scheme of like world conflict or injustices that we see uh, across our country, across our world, and understanding like, God, where are you? Like why in the world? The question I get asked more often than not, especially for people who don't know don't know the Lord yet. Uh, and they're, they're really battling with, um, man, race issues and seeing people treated unkindly or poorly or, man, black and white. And they, they should not be treated that way. Why, why would a loving God allow that to happen? And um, that's a great question. It's a hard question. And uh, so I think diving in uh, together tonight, maybe we, can, maybe, maybe we can scratch the surface on some of these and uh, really try to figure out you know, what, what the Lord's doing. Or, or why he allows some of these things, or uh, why he actually makes us walk through trials to develop character, uh, or maybe it's because of discipline. Maybe we maybe we're living in sin, and there's a correction that needs to happen. Because um, a loving God, like a loving any loving Father, does allow you to walk through conflict and uh, actually puts conflict not not conflict puts um, correction on you, so you learn you learn a lesson, you learn not what not to do on the back end. Um, but man, because of this beautiful relationship of a completely sovereign God and His creation, who are not we're not sovereign, we're finite beings. Uh, you see where we may have that difficult time uh, of that juxtaposition of man, where where is He coming from? Understanding His His plan, His full plan at all times. 
Uh, that's true for me. Uh, I, I would imagine that's probably true for you as well, not fully understanding all the time. I know I know. I always, I'm desperately wanting to, I want to get it all. I want to be in control of what's going on. I want to know so I can make the best decision. And this doesn't make sense to me, so how am I going to make a decision? But to understand how it's all going to work and to be in control is not what he's called us to do. It's not who he's called us to be. What he's called us to be is uh, a, ch a child of God who places trust in a holy and awesome God. Um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he'll make your path straight. Um, I've read that passage nine million times throughout my life, and every time I read it, it's like he smashed me in the head. He's like, if you only you'd get this right one time, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be in better shape. Right? Um, like, like I said earlier, I, I wrestled with specific questions like cancer. Why, why is that even a thing? Why is that even a thing? Why, why are some people rich and some people poor? Why did he get cast and I didn't get cast? I can sing better than he can sing. And that, don't lie. Y'all thought, thought that same thing. He can't act at all. How did he get there? I mean, whatever. But, um, why can't I find love? Why am I single? You know, all these things that are complete injustice. Um, but no, it's, he's, he's guiding us and he's leading us through um, really, really incredible challenges and questions. And the thing about God that's, that's really amazing, he has really big shoulders to ask those questions to. And he, he can handle it. He's pretty big. Um, so the right versus wrong, the unjust versus just, the evil versus good. Uh, let's wrestle with those. Let's ask those questions. Let's see what he says in the back end. Um, for me, uh, one, one of the challenges that I have had as being a follower of Christ um, is coming to grips with my, my fallible conceptions of, of goodness and love and righteousness and justice. Uh, I want to I wanna put this um, predetermined notion of who God should be and how he should act. Uh, instead of approaching the word of God and looking at the truth of who he already is and, uh, and what he's already promised and who he said and, w and what he said he would do. I, I want to like shake the truth up to make it fit my desires and my passions and my goals in life. And all throughout scripture we see the same thing with, with heroes of the faith. David, who is, who is feeling the injustice as he's living. Why are my enemies, why are they, why are they receiving all these good things? You see with Job, he didn't, he didn't even do anything wrong. He allowed, God allowed Satan to, to oppress him uh, on purpose. He was testing his faith. I would have crumbled after like the first boil. He's losing children. He's losing livestock. He's losing money. Uh, and his wife's telling him, man, curse the Lord. You don't, that, you don't deserve this. And then his friends come to him, man, you're living in sin. You're, you're the reason this is happening. And he's like, I don't, I don't know what to do. And the Lord finally just rebukes him and says, were you there at the foundation of the earth? Who do you think you are? Like, I literally, I caused the waves to stop. I caused the, the, the night to flee when the sun rises. Like, all these things, I just can't even fathom doing myself. But trusting in a God who is able and who, who created from, from a speck of dust, who created us from nothing. Uh, that's, it's, it's overwhelming to think um, that we get to be a part of this story. Uh, at the same time, he does want to be in relationship with us. That's why he sent his son to, for, for us, to die for us, uh, to redeem, because he, he, he enjoys the relationship with us. So we bring that to him. Uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to share some uh, stories of mine growing up that I, that I wrestled with personally uh, in this understanding, understanding God, understanding who he is. Um, trials that I went through, I, I was a part of a broken home. My, my father was an abusive alcoholic. And uh, so that's the first question. I never understood that. Like, why? Why our family? Why do we have to deal with that? Why did we have a, a family that was split in half? And why did we live in poverty for the next decade of, of life, not being able to do the things that we wanted to do? Um, why did I have to see my mom, um, this mental abuse, verbal, physical abuse, bruises, all this stuff? I, I watched it happen. And I, I don't actually have an answer to this day. Uh, of why we had to go through that, other than uh, I now know what it looks like to be a man. I now know what it looks like to treat my wife with respect, to raise uh, my two daughters up. 
uh, loving people, um, to be a dad that I never I got to experience. Like those are those are blessings I see on the back end that I don't know if I would have truly seen had my dad been around the whole time. I probably would be drinking right next to him right now. I probably would be hitting people just because I I, I wrestle with anger uh, internally as well. Um, and then my friend Adam, uh, he uh, uh, Adam Heyman, he wrestled with cancer. Um, from the day he was, I think it was the day he was born, he was born with this deficiency that turned into cancer very quickly um, and a heart issue. Um, and he actually died at age of 11. And uh, for, for a long, long time, uh, I, I, I'll tell you right now, I don't know to this day why. Why, like what, what brought the Lord's glory from that situation? And I ask him all the time. Um, uh, but I, I wrestled with those and I, I, those became very dark dark places for me as a, as a Christ follower, as an individual. Um, but what I have learned over the last 33 years of life is that God always has a purpose in the pain. He always has a purpose for the pain. Um, in uh, John 9, we see an example of this. Jesus meets a man who was born blind, um, and he's forced to beg. He's, that, that's how he gets by. That's how he gets money. And uh, Jesus' disciples, they, they approach it and they say, Lord, why, um, why was this man born blind? Whose fault was it? Was it because of his sin? Was it his parents' sin? And instead of Jesus answering uh, right out, he goes, man, y'all are, y'all are crazy. It, it wasn't because of anything he did. Um, John 9, 3 says, neither this man nor his parents sinned. This happened to the work of God may be displayed in his life. <laughs> At the end of the day, if I went through um, the stories that I did, I know, I know each one of you have gone through stories of pain and questions that you may not know the answers to. Um, and it, it, it may be because of things in your life that God's working out, or it, it may be because the work of God is going to be displayed in your life. And that's hard to handle when, you, uh, when you're walking in the middle of the pain. But this man spent years enduring the hardships of life without sight. Jesus basically said that God would be glorified through this tragedy. He reached down, grabbed some mud, put saliva in it, wiped it on his eyes, told him to go wash, wash his eyes um, in the pool of uh, Siloam, I think, Siloam, uh, and he did. He, he walked in obedience and did that, and then immediately after, he was able to see. And my favorite part of this entire story was afterwards, um, the Pharisees came to him, and they said, a second time, they summoned the man, the man who had been blind, uh, they said, give glory to God by telling the truth. Uh, they said, we know this man's a sinner. And he replies, he says, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. All I know is I was blind, and now I see. <laughs> so he didn't even know what was going on. He didn't know who Jesus was. He didn't know if he was a sinner. He didn't know if he was the son of God. He said, I don't know if he's a sinner or not. All I know is that once I was blind, I was blind, and now I see you right now. And he didn't, he didn't have to understand everything to believe and mm -hmm. have faith in what happened and what was and what was okay. going on, yeah. um, totally. and what and what a, what a story for us. You don't you don't always have to understand the situations yeah. that are going on, both good and bad, yeah. mm -hmm. both painful and mountaintop experiences. You don't have to understand it all the time. But man, when when you choose to have faith and choose to believe, mm -hmm. how deep how, how much deeper of a walk can we can, can, can we have with Jesus in the midst of those trials? Um, Truth is, God loves us, and he, and he does have good plans for us. We see that in Romans eight twenty eight. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm working together all. Uh, I'm working together all things for the good of those who love me and who are called according to my purpose. Mm -hmm. um, John sixteen thirty three. It said, I, uh, Jesus is telling his disciples, "I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me." He's telling them so that have peace in him. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. And I think it's important for us to understand this, so we won't be confused. And lose our faith in him when life is hard. But then he didn't stop there. He said, but take heart. I did a little word study on that word heart there. Uh, take courage. Be confident. Be certain. Be undaunted. Um, and then he continues, because I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. all, these, all these trials, they're fleeting. All this pain is fleeting. All the injustice of the world. He is the holder of justice. Is he not? He's the giver of love. He's the originator of righteousness. You know, so all these things that we're worried about and that we see and we don't understand, he's like, I got it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Believe not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. Um, it's incredible assurance. Uh, 
uh, I wanted to tell a story. I'm, I'm flying through these notes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Come on, notes. Well, it's going to be a really short notes. hang if I keep <laughs> um, But I wanted, I wanted to walk, that was just my intro, by the way. So, well, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I wanted to walk through the story of Lazarus because I think that is a, a pretty incredible uh, story of, of not understanding of the why that Jesus did something and not understanding the purpose or the timing of why Jesus did something. So I'm going to read uh, a couple passages from this, uh, John 11, if you want to follow along. Um, and we'll start, we'll start with John 11, uh, verse 1. It says, Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister, uh, yeah, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with uh, ointment. So there's already this relationship of, uh, of respect and reverence to the Lord. So they were, they were friends. And wiped his feet with her hair. Whose brother, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, to Jesus, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, no, this illness doesn't lead to death. It's for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer. They weren't with Lazarus. Why in the world is he staying where he's at knowing that he's sick? They all know that he can heal. They've seen it happen. They're like, no, if you would just come, he's sick. We, need to go. we have to get there. We have to get there. And uh, Jesus is like, because Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. So when he heard Lazarus was sick, he just stayed for two days. He waited for two more days. That doesn't make any sense to me. My understanding is, is blown right there. <laughs> then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking you to stone you. Are you, are you going to go there again? He said, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks uh, walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Mm -hmm. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I'm going to wake him. He knew. He knew. It wasn't a surprise to him. I'm going to jump down to a little further um, to the Jesus Weep section, uh, verse 28. He says, uh, when she said, when, uh, when she had said this, now she had just said uh, right before, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming to the world. So there, there, there's this trust and this belief, but they're still mourning the fact that their brother, the brother has fallen asleep. So um, uh, when she, when she had said this, she, uh, she went away and called her sister Mary, saying in private, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come into the village, but it was still in place where Martha had met him. So he's still not there. He's taking his sweet, precious time. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise and quickly go out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to weep. Now, Mary came to Jesus, uh, where, where Jesus was, and, he, and she saw him. She fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said, Lord, come and see. And then Jesus wept. I'm going to pause there. And I think that even, um, and here's why, because even in our trials, even in our, our tribulations, even in our pain, God knows the outcome, but he still is there to comfort. And he still wants to walk and cry with us and be with us in the midst of our tears. I think that's really important for us to see because then he's just about to, uh, to blow the doors wide open. But whatever you're walking through personally, uh, it's, it's important that we not get so, so focused on the situation and so focused on, on, on the scenario that we forget an almighty God, the creator of the universe, does love us. He is walking with us. And our, as we put our trust in him, we see a bigger picture of what the outcome so, uh, verse 38, then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. <laughs> Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? <laughs> so they took away the stone. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. He already knows. I thank you that you've heard me. Not, I thank you that you will hear me. He's already done it. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe you sent me. 
Uh, so a couple things. In a nutshell, because of his love, he stayed. He didn't go immediately. It was his perfect timing that needed to take place, not, not, not the people who were coming to him who were walking in the pain. Ultimately, it was meant to bring glory to God. He wants to walk with you in the pain. He is the remedy for our pain. He will always show up, but it will always be in his perfect timing. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the nutshell that I'm seeing. That last verse, it was meant for the ones still standing there. Those that were left. Those, uh, th there were a lot of those who gave up, I, I would imagine, who gave up and left probably two days earlier, or four days earlier when he had died. But there's no hope. And to this point, they hadn't seen a resurrection. At this point, they had seen miracles. They had seen water turned to wine. They had seen a lot of different things happen, but they were praying for healing. Um, the problem was God wasn't interested in doing a healing. God was in the, in the business of doing a resurrection. And they were, they, they were praying for the wrong thing. Not, let me rephrase that. They weren't praying. Praying for healing is a powerful thing. And they, they, they trusted that he could. But again, God's big plan, at that moment, he wasn't trying to do a healing. He was trying to do a resurrection. Um, when we lean on our own understanding, we always lack the full confidence of what God may be doing. We become blindsided by the pain, by the impatience, overwhelmed by our own desires, our own agendas, and we miss the miracle that God's about to accomplish simply because we didn't stay. <laughs> Lazarus' friends were so focused on, heal my friend, heal my friend, he's going to die if you're not here, and they left. So what are, you, what are you praying for right now? What is it that you can't let go of right now? What is it that you're feeling pain-wise that's blinding you from trusting in God completely? Is it a booking? He may be wanting to give you a blessing rather than a booking. Is it financial stability? He may be wanting to give you freedom instead of financials at the moment. Is it a cause that I'm, I'm for this cause and that, and that causes a lot of stress and a lot of, a lot of pain and God's saying no. The cause is for Christ. Like yeah. That's the cause. This is the goal. Trust in him with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. He will make your path straight. So the, again, the question is never will Jesus show up. Jesus is always going to show up. The question is, will you still be standing there when he does? Yeah. So as we, as we kind of walk together, what I want to do is take some time and talk with one another and develop this piece of maybe there's things in your own life that you're, you're questioning, you're, you're having doubt you're not able to trust the Lord in very specific situations. I want to walk through that together. Iron sharpens iron, right? So we can speak into one another. Um, but here's my phrase that I want to take from here. Stay strong and lean. So stand strong and lean. We don't lean into our own understanding, but we lean into the arms of Jesus. We lean into the presence of the Almighty. We lean into what he's already promised. We've already heard it. Romans 8, 28. God is working all things together for the good of those who love him. I know we're called according to his purpose. You either believe that or you don't believe it. Yeah. John 16, 33, I have told you this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. He already tells us this, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And again, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord. He's going to make our path straight. Will we be standing there to see it when he does? Stand strong and lean. Trust in God. So let's take a few moments, uh, just gathering groups of three Three or four? Two and three, no more than four. Two and three, no more than four. <laughs> uh, go ahead, and, I, and I'll start. I'll start doing some questions. I'll start speaking some questions as you ask that.